All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. In this video, we're going to talk about Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford and a very, very well known, a very experienced trainer saying that Terrence Crawford is in a lot bigger trouble than he thinks. Let's talk about that in this video. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. In this video, we're going to be on the welterweight division. Errol Spence Jr. is fighting Terrence Crawford. As soon as we hear about the announcement, I have it in my heart and in my mind that this fight is going to get announced and should get announced within the next couple of weeks. Um, but before we get into the subject matter of this video, which is what a trainer that I spoke to had to say about the fight that I thought was very, very interesting. Let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are a longtime subscriber and supporter to the channel thank you so much for your support if you are new to the channel please ex please accept my invitation to subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos which we do pretty much on a daily basis and uh both on the in the video format and in the live stream format all right so Hopefully soon we'll be getting a really big fight. And I am not talking about the uh, Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin fight that will be happening in September. Now, that is the big fight that we know is coming up. However, uh, from my standpoint, does not have a tremendous amount of buzz. Not a lot of people really looking forward to it. The real fight that people are looking forward to and, and hoping gets made is the Errol Spence Jr. versus Terrence Crawford fight for undisputed at 100 and 47 pounds. Now, uh, Terrence Crawford in some books that have come out has come out as the slight favorite over Errol Spence Jr. I saw one book that had it like plus 150 for Errol, minus 130 uh, for Terrence. Uh, I had seen earlier when right after Errol Spence Jr. had beaten your Danny's Ugas that Errol had come out as the favorite in uh, on some odds in some odds makers. But it looks like the trend is now that Terrence Crawford is if they make that fight is going to go into that fight as a slight favorite. Right. So I talked to a couple of my associates. People that I, you know, actually really do have very, very good conversations with uh, and uh, talk to them about the fight and who they really thought was, you know, who was the favorite and said, hey, man, Terrence is looking like he's going to be the favorite in this. And they said something that was really also uh, co-signed by um, Tim Bradley and was co-signed by uh, by Derek James. But. It was like, look, man, a lot of people and this is kind of harsh talk, right? A lot of people do not um, necessarily understand what Errol Spence Jr. does very, very well. And, you know, Vegas odds, a lot of times they're skewed by what people want, by, skewed by, you know, how they can make money off of people more so than who they really, you know, think is going to actually win the fight. Right. So that was the first thing about the odds. However, when I was like, OK, so what is it that people do not what is it people do not know or do not get? And they act, brought up something that was very interesting to me. It's like, first of all, Errol Spence Jr. is somebody that has known that he is going to fight Terrence Crawford and has been knowing that uh, about Terrence Crawford for a very long time. He is a student of the game and is somebody that he and Derek James even though they may not have said it before, have had a set game plan for Terrence Crawford and how they're going to go about fighting Terrence Crawford for a long time. And this is a situation where you have an older fighter and you have a younger fighter. Or, and I know some people will say, well, you know, the age difference is not that really that big between the two of them. Uh, Errol is 32. The other one's 30. You know, other guys, 34. But and when you talk about you know, who was brought into who was in the limelight of boxing earlier. It's Terrence Crawford's. And they knew that they were at 147 pounds. And when uh, and when Terrence Crawford got to 140, that eventually he'd be at 147. So they've been very familiar with Terrence Crawford. 
and had in their game, in their mind's eye, how they were going to go about and beating them. And I had actually spoken with somebody before Terrence Crawford moved up to 147 directly from their camp. And they told me, look, this is going to this is going to surprise you about. I'm not going to tell you specifically what they said. Like, this is going to surprise you about Aaron, T- Aaron and Terrence. That is going to surprise you about Aaron, uh, about the Aaron and Terrence fight and things that they know that people typically underestimate about Arrow. But the main thing that Tim Bradley said that my contact said was, look, there is a big issue that Terrence ha- Terrence Crawford has with southpaws. And the fact that Terrence Craw- that Errol Spence Jr. is a southpaw is going to eliminate uh, Terrence Crawford's ability to switch on him. And because he cannot switch on him and and have a and have it become a situation where he has a softball advantage, right? Then that is going to be the problem with 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 with, uh, with Arrow. And Arrow already has a game plan in his mind, in their mind for what happens when he goes to Southpaw. And unlike other people who have had, you know, had the ability or known what to do or came up with, you know, with strategy for that, Arrow's actually a Southpaw and taking Arrow Spence Jr. And fighting him in a southpaw stance, which is a closed stance, is just a very, very hard situation for Terrence Crawford. So he's going to more than likely be forced. Terrence Crawford is going to be forced to fight longer in orthodox than he will in the southpaw stance in that fight. And if he does that, that is to Errol Spence Jr.'s advantage because Terrence Crawford is a better southpaw fighter than he is an orthodox fighter. Then you also had heard Bob Arum uh say maybe I think this was about two years ago Bob Aram said it but he was talking about it when he was talking about Terrence Crawford fighting Manny Pacquiao he was like look this guy here is uh Terrence you know and he's I think he was kind of make a little bit making an excuse for why he wasn't making the fight with Manny Pacquiao um because he said look my south my matchmakers tell me that we should not put Terrence in the Terrence don't like to put Terrence in the ring with southpaws, and that was one of the reasons that ter- that that um, uh, top rank was a little bit hesitant to make the George uh, the uh, the Julius and Dungo fight, as Julius and Dungo was a big punching southpaw, and people were concerned that Terrence Crawford, who, who basically pulls out with his head up, could get into a situation where he would have problems with 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 a southpaw that catches him. Right now, if you look at that from an Errol Spence Jr. standpoint. If he's fighting a southpaw and he's opening himself up against Errol Spence Jr., Errol Spence Jr. can let his hands go and not open himself up. So you have a guy that is really not opening himself up against a guy that will open himself up to counterpunch. And that could very well be the downfall of Terrence Crawford, uh, Terrence Crawford in that fight. And that it is the main issue that Terrence Crawford has with Errol Spence Jr. is a style matchup. Errol does not have a lot of holes in his game. And he is somebody that is very, very prime and ready to go and understands what he wants to do with Terrence Crawford. And Terrence Crawford is going to have to do something is pretty much going to have to have use his exceptional athleticism and his talent to beat Terrence uh, Errol Spence Jr. But Errol, and this is, you know, pretty much the crux of what they said uh, out of out of uh, Errol's camp. It's like, look, Ter- Errol's a lot better athlete than people think he is. It's that he fights in a very controlled manner, does not in a very in a very, you know, uh, technically proficient manner does not mean this man does not have a lot of power behind what he's doing and he doesn't have very very good hand speed and foot and foot speed he is just fighting in a way where he is trying to put something on every shot he doesn't overload he doesn't overload and he's being very defensively responsible and trying to fight trying to go to the body and and hurt people to the body because that is how you break down and knock people out However, he's a much better boxer with a lot faster hands and a lot better footwork than people than people realize. And if Terrence Crawford thinks that he cannot that Errol Smith Jr. cannot fight on the outside, that he cannot move very well, stay and make Terrence Crawford come try to find him, then he is mistaken. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you're thinking in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace. Peace.